probability questions are not that common on the SAT, but they do appear occasionally, so we do need to know how to handle them. So probability is essentially just finding out the chance of doing something, of some sort of outcome, given certain possibilities. So the simplest way to see this is, let's say we're given a list of numbers, so 6, 13, 9, 8, 2, 0. And I'm asking the question, all right, Given this list of numbers, if I wanted to pick an odd, what are my what's the probability? If I make one selection, probability of picking an odd. And for this, we have to make a fraction. On the bottom, we put the total number of possible outcomes. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six numbers to pick from. And on the top, we put the number the number of chances or the number of outcomes that satisfy our question, so the number of odds in this case. So we have one odd, two odd, and that's it. So we put that two on top, and there you go. Two out of six, or one out of three, would be our probability. And that's pretty much it when it comes to probability. There's not much they're going to do. Um, the one thing they might do is, let's say you are flipping a coin, and they ask, what's the probability of getting heads, heads, heads? How would we figure that out? Well, let's look at the probability of just getting heads on one flip. Well, there are two possible choices, right? There's heads or tails, and we have a one out of two chance of getting that. What's the probability of getting a heads on the second one? Well, that would also be one half, and on the third one, it would also be one half. Okay, well, what do we do now? Well, for this situation, when these are independent events, in other words, when this coin flip doesn't affect the outcome of this coin flip, right? They're, they're separate. We simply multiply the probabilities. So in this case, it'd be 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which would be 1 over 8, and that would be the answer. So when they're independent events, you just multiply the probabilities of the different individual events, and then you're done. The other case in which the events are dependent, they include this in the blue book, but they don't talk about the mathematical um, way to figure out the probability of dependent events. So for instance, um, picking a deck of cards, picking cards out of a deck. If you're picking two cards, for instance, the first card, you know, let's say you're trying to pick, I don't know, aces out of a deck of cards. The first pick, it's 4 out of 52, right? But notice the second pick, it's not going to be 3 out of 52, because by selecting that card, you're lowering, you're changing what's happening here. It's not independent events. By picking a card, you're changing the conditions for that second pick. Unlike here, where you're flipping a coin, regardless of whether you get heads or tails, you're still going to have the same probability here. Here, the, the chances of picking another, um, of picking a, a, a ace on this time would be 3 out of 51, right? Because you've got 3 left and then 51 cards because you've taken 1 in the first one. This, you don't need to know. This, kind of, this is a little confusing. This is beyond uh, what you need for the SAT. Just be aware that on the super hard ones, they might be talking about dependent events rather than simply independent events. In general, though, the kind of question I did here where you simply have to create a probability, this is what you're going to see on the SAT. This stuff about independent and dependent events is a little bit beyond what they're going to test. So if you know this, you should be pretty much ready to go uh, for any of these kinds of questions you see.